Flashback, Episode 35, Working for the Mob for Goodness. We were in our Riverdale safe house. The dapper mafia lieutenant mobster named Carmine Erichetti, or simply Lusso, was about to open a wheeled metal suitcase that Sarah had given to him as payment for our deal with the Mafia to secure their help. Lusso leaned over the metal suitcase. He cautiously and slowly opened it, revealing stacks and stacks of $100 bills and 100 vials of diamonds. Sarah explained, each diamond vial is about $1 million street value. There are 100 vials of diamonds. That's $100 million of diamond value. The deal was 100 million total dollars. Diamonds resale value fluctuates. I understand that. We don't want any excuses or missteps. So we have added $500,000 in cash. Consider it insurance, margin, or just a tip. Sarah said, whatever you call it, it's a show of faith and of trust. Uso smiled and he said, nice, nice, good. I like you. You're straight, <laughs> right and to the point. He added, and you value relationships. You value trust. He smiled wider yet. And faith, faith, it's important. Faith in God and faith in each other. He looked upward and said, I have faith in the man upstairs, you know? Sarah smiled at Luso. I agree. We should all have faith in the person upstairs. Luso, pleased with what he saw, closed the suitcase and he said, well, I believe this concludes my visit. And with that, he walked outside down the stairs and to his metallic deep red Tesla Roadster that he had parked in the roundabout driveway in front of our mansion's front entry door. And into the passenger seat he went and he was gone. Sarah said, and with Luso goes most of our non-gold, non-cash money. We do still have a few diamond vials remaining. Sarah smiled. Rick, you will need to rein in uh, your spending spree. Taylor opened the envelope, impatient of the mafia instructions. She pulled a stack of double-sided sheets of paper that had separated type sections out from the envelope. She placed the sheets of paper on the kitchen table for us all to see as she read them aloud. Taylor said, the papers, the list, they have photos of people with names on them, roles and needs. Plus, they list people's home and work addresses and their phone numbers. Taylor grimly added, it also lists their family members. She grumbled, I am sure as leverage, nasty, but leverage nonetheless. Katie interjected, evil, evil leverage. We should not stoop to such lowly scumbag ways like leverage and blackmail. Taylor agreed mostly with Katie. Taylor surmised, it seems apparent that we are to use these contacts to complete our mission objectives for the Mafia. She began reading from the sheets of paper. First, friend Gabby Carmichael needs laparoscopic colectomy for colon cancer. Gabby was a 64-year-old Italian woman with long black hair and soulful deep hazel eyes. She continued, the job ensure Gabby receives surgery. Dr. Gao Wang, surgical oncologist, he performs colon surgeries. Dr. Gao 
is a 54-year-old Chinese-born second-generation immigrant. He's clean-cut and maintains a surgeon-friendly short hair, it looks like. And he wears functional glasses, doesn't look very designer, and clearly a lot of medical scrubs. The job? We need him to perform surgery on Gabby Carmichael. And next, Kendra Sorbo, Hospital Admissions and Records IT Administrator and National Vax Database. Kendra apparently looks petite, is 28 years old. She's a black woman with shoulder length black hair, who was acutely aware apparently of her appearance and thusly has made sure she's always appropriately dressed and appears to be proper. Taylor explained, the documents explain that Kendra has made sure that she looks successful despite her clothes coming from secondhand thrift shops or discount racks. Kendra apparently wears often thick plastic rim glasses and a simple white blouse that had a tint of green to its color. The job, approve Gabby Carmichael for surgery. Taylor paused and resumed reading from the sheet. Second, Mitzi Ballard, journalist for New York Times, harassing friends and clients. Mitzi is a 32-year-old white woman with long, flowing hair. Seems to be more of a unique color, a shade between sort of a Irish red strawberry blonde and blonde itself. She wears black cloth leggings often, apparently, and often matching black crop tops. She tries to be hip cool. To finish her I don't care but I want to be good looking ensemble, she pushes the chic cool fashion styles. Taylor said, the job, stop the harassment. Taylor spoke, look, there are many ways that each of these missions can go. I think they will be fluid. Consequently, we need capable, diverse skill teams. And given the danger that we have seen, each team needs a veteran soldier. Katie asked, how can working for the mafia, how can working for the mob be good? How could God want us to work for the mob? How? As often, Katie's heart was torn with the greater good being more important than any good or evil action or any sin. Taylor sought to comfort Katie and explain, big missions can require deliberate, big sacrifice and compromise. Sometimes we must use fire to fight fire. Sometimes we must destroy to defend. Sometimes we must suspend our values, even our lives, to achieve our mission. Sarah interjected, The FBI, the CIA, and many three-letter government agencies have all worked with the Mafia. Sarah said, The mob's connections and enforcers are beneficial to monitoring and controlling underground and illegal operations. In the eyes of God, everyone has value. Everyone can be moral. Even those that operate in gray or black businesses. Most people are not white or black, but are ever shifting shades of gray between it is ill-advised, Sarah said, to judge a book by its cover. And it is ill-advised to judge a person by their job or their circumstance. With the consternation over working with the Mafia closed, apparently, Taylor looked like it was time to close the planning session as well. She said, So, I suggest the following teams. Team Sarah, Solo. You silence reporter Mitzi Ballard of the New York Times. Team Katie and Rick. 
You convinced the good doctor Gao Wang to perform the surgery. And I guess he knows Gabby Carmichael is not vaccinated personally. She snarked. Whatever a mission is, it's a mission. And Team Bob and Taylor. You will persuade Kendra Sorbo, the hospital administrator, to falsify vaccination records and status and add Gabby to the surgery schedule. Taylor looked for approval across the team, into each person's face, winking and smiling, almost nudging them to agree with her. Everyone said almost in unison, Hoo-ah! Sarah drove everyone to their respective target places of work, as if it was a weekday morning and they were reporting to their jobs. She then drove on to her own target place of work and parked nearby. We were all there ready to begin our individual mission quests for God. <laughs>